Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Zuko and today we are celebrating our 10,000 subscriber goal by doing a question and answer video. I want to thank you guys for supporting the channel over the past year and a half. It really does mean a lot to me and it's very motivating to know that for whatever reason, people are willing to listen to me talk. So I don't want to take that for granted. So thank you very much. Anyway, we got a lot of questions to get through today. I'm going to try and do my best to get through most of them. I'm sure I'll miss a few and the video can only be so long. And there are a couple of repeats as well, so forgive me if I miss yours, but try my best. Also, some of these questions are going to take pretty lengthy answers to get through, so it's basically going to become story time at that point. But hopefully you enjoy, and I think we should just begin. So starting us off is Carla Tran 9316 What are your top criteria for buying or pre-ordering figures? Design, company, price, or source material? Well, for me, absolutely, it's source material. When I look at my collection... I want to see things that I love, shows that really resonated with me, video games that left an impact on my life. I want them to kind of define me in a way. Like if you looked at what I owned, it would kind of like put some pieces together and help you know who I am, right? But I'm absolutely not against buying just like an OC character or a figure of a character that I know nothing about if they look good. So I would say character design would be number two and then price would be number three if something is too expensive probably gonna back out of it uh, if it's not like a must buy and then company I feel like company I, I usually don't run into that issue but I, I think that's because I don't buy a lot of OC characters and maybe I've gotten a little lucky from Pristina 4628 what is the most bizarre anime figure you ever saw it could be more than one well initially when I saw this question I was gonna try and think of like a plus 18 figure but I felt like that was a little too easy because while there's some very tasteful ones there's also some really, really ridiculous ones, especially if you get into the resin category. Like, it's the Wild West out there, so I wanted to think about it a little bit harder, and I landed on the Amazon from Dragon's Crown by Beats. Now, I feel like this is a bit of like a character assassination because of the proportions are just all over the place. Like, I get it, artistic interpretation. But this is absolutely ridiculous. I do not know what went wrong with this figure. I don't know if anybody likes it. As you like turn the figure around, it gets even stranger. Just an absolute unit. Everything about it is wrong. It kind of makes it wonderful for that reason. But uh, yeah, I don't think I could think of one that's like worse than that. Or maybe not worse, but like strange that they would take a direction like that with the Amazon. I guess they just want to like make her as exaggerated as possible. But uh that's my answer. Cat Girl Lover asks, what kind of display cases and stands do you get for your figures? Any recommendations? Well, I might not be the best person to ask about this because I personally have not bought any shells in quite a while. But I will say back in the day, Detolf shells were very easy to recommend. But unfortunately, they're not anymore because one, they were discontinued, and two, they made the shelves worse by like thinning out the glass so they can't hold as much weight. Now, Ikea has, like, replaced these shelves with a different type of display case. I don't remember the name of it, but I do know that Battletide on YouTube made, like, an entire video about this display case. And he's a great YouTuber, puts a lot of work into his videos, and I would just recommend checking that out. But for me, moving forward, I'm probably not gonna buy that. I feel like it's a little small. And ideally, I would like to just get more bookshelves with, like, doors that close that are also made of glass. That's kind of what I like. The one thing about Detolves that kind of suck for me is that they're squares, right? Like, every shelf is basically a square unless you uh, adjust the shelves. And it's very limiting in some ways that, like, you sometimes want to put figures together, but it's just not going to work depending on, like, how wide they are or how tall they are. These bookshelves are not Billy bookshelves. I know those are very popular, but I just got these from my parents when they moved. They just kind of, like, were getting rid of them, and I'm like, hey, I'll take them. They also gave me, like, this huge display case that was uh, in our family ever since, like, I was born, but I don't use that currently. It's in the other room, and it's kind of big and bulky, so I don't know if I'm going to take it, but that's what I want to use moving forward, but that thing is so old that I can't possibly recommend it. They also ask, how is your planning for space when ordering new figures? What do you do with all the boxes and extra parts? Well, I'm thankful that right now I have a lot of storage, just not a lot of like places to display my figures, but I don't really have to worry about like where my boxes are going to go. Might have to worry about that in the future though. 
but as far as the boxes and extra parts, I can't get rid of anything. I feel genuinely bad when I get rid of a single box, and I shouldn't be that way. I feel like I shouldn't put so much value in a box, but I also feel like there is just inherently a reason to keep them, especially when, like, you know, they come with a bunch of parts, and if I, like, take them out of the blister and start putting them in, like, different areas, little baggies and stuff like that, they're more prone to getting damaged, they're more prone to getting lost, and I don't want to worry about that. So, uh, right now, I feel like I'm just stacking and stacking these boxes until I can't stack no more. I'm not really a shining example, I, I don't want to pretend like I am. From Raftagar4, what is the worst figure that you own? That is a very easy question to answer, and I have the figure right here. And that is the Ghost and Goblins Arthur from the Games Classic line by Union Creative. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have never seen this figure before, but I'm here to tell you that this shit sucks. Now, this has a gimmick where you can take off the armor, because when you get hit in the game, you get kind of like stripped down to your boxers. It's like a goofy thing, and they tried to replicate that with this figure. But in order to do that, you have to take off every single piece of his armor, and it is the most like horrible figure to handle because sometimes you won't want to do that. You want to keep him in the armor, but the little latches and the connection points are so flimsy that he just falls apart. Whenever you touch this figure, it is a mess. I absolutely hate this thing. And it comes with a stand that doesn't even hold him. And this figure is really light, so there's literally no reason why that should be. Union Creative really lost me when they made this guy. And they continue to make more in this classic games line. I have another one right here. This is Beat from Jet Set Radio which was very expensive back in the day. I got very lucky buying this for like 20 bucks, but while it doesn't have like the horrible downsides of Arthur, it also has like zero accessories. It is very like loose in all of his joints, and it was like 70 bucks for like a figure with one spray can, and the way they designed him was to look like a Dreamcast character. He's very blocky, which I think is very charming, but it shouldn't have been that expensive. Next up, we got questions from Mudamade62. What are your PC specs? Well, funny story, my PC actually died about like six or seven months into making this channel. But thankfully, at the time where I needed something very quickly, my older brother built a computer, left it at our parents' house, and never took it when he moved. So I asked him if I could borrow it, and he said sure, because he was just never planning to take it. I don't remember the specs off of the top of my head. You probably won't be impressed, but I'll leave them in the description down below. Are you into garage kits or model kits, and do you have any? I used to build a ton of Gunpla. It was one of my, like, favorite hobbies about, like, five or six years ago. I found it extremely therapeutic, and it helped me get through some pretty tough times when I was having a bit of health issues, which eh, maybe I'll talk about later, but... I used to love it, and I've built quite a few, but I did sell off a bunch of them, just because I was kind of getting tired of only, like, straight building them without, like, customizing them too much, but just to prove that I, I do have some of them, I'll go get them. Alright, so here is, uh, two of my Gunpla. Pretty basic stuff. This guy, I believe, is named the Amazing Red Warrior. He's from Gundam Build Fighters. I forget if it's Try or the original. I absolutely love the original Gundam Build Fighters. That is, like, my guilty pleasure show. I'll watch that any day of the week. Highly recommended if you like a shonen, like, coming-of-age story. And this guy was awesome. It's basically just the RX-78, but, uh, red and, like, godly in the show. And then I also uh, have this guy right here. I don't remember the name of him, but he was uh, from Iron-Blooded Orphans, which I've never actually seen. But originally, he's blue and yellow. But I actually painted this one. I did notice a bit of, like, a scuff right here, so I guess I didn't top coat it correctly. But it was nice to actually paint one of these. I love doing this stuff. I would love to get back into it. I just don't really have the time, but maybe one day. In terms of space efficiency, do you have some figures on rotation or just keep them boxed? I think some of you guys might notice that in the DTOF shells, which are off camera right now, I do typically put in the new figures that I unbox if, like, I don't want to put them away. Because I am kind of limited on space right now, but I do want to show them off. And sometimes I look at the figure and I'm just like, I, I don't want to put this away. This looks like a pain in the ass, so I'll just put them in there. I'll put something else away. So technically, yes, I do have a rotation. Next up, we got questions from We Abound. I don't know if I said that right, apologies, but how did you become interested in Toho? 
honestly just like word of mouth on forums back in the day, like 2011, 2012. These games just looked awesome to me, like just very difficult bullet hells. I was always up for a challenge and I like games like that. So it was like a perfect fit for me, but it felt like you couldn't escape it. If you were like ever looking into like nerdy culture in Japan that wasn't like anime or like mainstreamish video games, Toho would probably come up, especially if you liked art. And when I went to Japan, it was like everywhere in 2012. I did go to Kamaket that year. And of course I got some art books and some merchandise. Actually, hold on, let me go get something. I believe I showed this once or twice on the channel before, this like Toho blanket that I picked up at Kamaket. I don't think I ever mentioned where I got it. It's very small, like this is the entire size of it. Uh, I think it's made for an infant. I, I don't know what you're supposed to do with this thing. Maybe like throw it over your couch, but it's very soft and it's very cute. But we have another question. Have you ever hidden or censored explicit figures when you had company over? No, because I never have company over. But truthfully, none of my good friends would care at all. My girlfriend does not care and also collects this stuff too. And honestly, I only have about like three or four figures that I would even have to think about putting away. So I'm fine for now, but maybe I would worry about that in the future. From Virginia Stevens 5982, do you have a character that is almost always a must buy even though you already have figures of them? Taiga from Toradora. I believe I have 15 to 18 figures of her. Uh, some of them are a little small, so let's not get carried away here. The collection's not that big, but I do have a lot, and I'm going to continue buying more of them if they come out. And they are, because that new Shiramuku figure looks absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to buy that. It's our good pal DTTC Reviews. How you doing, Derek? He wants to know, what is it going to take for you to start collecting One Piece figures? Probably a house, because how the hell can you possibly facilitate all of those nice figures, right? Like, there are so many, and you can't just buy one. But I will say, the new Luffy and Ace figure that Mega House is making is extremely tempting. Like, I really do feel like if I'm going to jump into One Piece figures, that would be the one. Either that or a Gear 5 figure, because Gear 5 is really freaking cool. So, one day it might happen, but not right now. It's easier if I just live vicariously through your collection instead. Radian RPG Network, I'm curious, other than anime figures, do you buy any anime merch, such as prints, keychains, art books, or random knickknacks? Well, truthfully, when it comes to disposable income, I split it two ways for the most part. Anime figures and retro video games, or I guess just video games in general, because I will buy some new stuff from time to time. But after that, the money's real small, right? Like, I only have so much to go around, and these are my two, like, collecting hobbies, right? I really, really do like collecting old video games. I have about, like, 900 or so. I know you don't really get to see that in my room, but they're in boxes somewhere, and you'll see that eventually. But I do have some manga. Not too much, but I do have a little bit. I've been getting into acrylic stands. I think those are kind of cool lately. Occasionally, I'll buy a soundtrack. Occasionally, I'll buy an art book. Like, I do like this stuff. I just feel like I just don't have enough money to buy all of it. Next up, we got Ruru3182. For the q and I'd like to know how you and your girlfriend met, as well as if you were both into figure collecting before meeting. Well, for that last point, no. I was into figure collecting, but she was not. And how we met was very simple, not like a super interesting story. I just happened to have a best friend who was working with her at the time, and he kept telling me over and over that I should really ask her out, because we were into like the exact same things, and it seemed like we were very compatible. So while I had zero charisma, and Zero Riz, eventually I did ask her out, and we started dating, and it's been 10 lovely years ever since. But to backtrack a little bit, while I was a figure collector, she was like a video game collector, and she also loved collecting like Blu-rays and manga and just like soundtrack stuff like that. It was a lot of media, right? But not really figures, and over the years we kind of just like influenced each other to get into the other's hobby. It wasn't immediate, though like right away when we both had to like exchange gifts for Christmas, I got her a figure of Menma from Anohana, and she got me like a nice stack of games including Mother 3, which is like one of my favorite games of all time. It really meant a lot to me at the time, but I wasn't immediately jumping into retro video games right after that. It, it took a little bit, you know, just going into her room, seeing all the video games, stuff like that. Plus there was like the influence from like seeing all these channels on YouTube about like collecting video games, 
where I felt like, all right, I really want to get into this hobby. And then for her, I think just like seeing how much stuff I had and seeing like the connections that you can kind of make with like the shows and then getting that like physical figure of the characters that you absolutely adore. She wanted to get into that, right? So as we kept exchanging gifts, it just kind of happened very naturally. It's almost like that meme, can a figure collecting boy love a retro video game collecting girl? And uh, it worked out really well, because now we have stuff to always talk about. Very easy to exchange gifts. And it's nice to have somebody who shares the same interests that you do. Michael McGuire 7526 asks, How does your shelf space or room space play a role in deciding your figure purchases? I am thinking about the future when I move. So if something seems like way too big, I'm probably going to skip it. Like, I understand that I can't have everything and I'm not trying to have everything I think that's really important to think about in this hobby like especially early on you want to buy as much as possible you want to catch up to other people but it's not a game right like you just collect what you like and you have to reasonably do so because not everybody has the same amount of space the same amount of money and you know I talked about my girlfriend collecting figures she has a ton of them as well and I can't just keep buying again and again and again for myself when I have to think about when we combined all of our stuff together, where is it all possibly going to go? So if something is too big and we feel like we don't need it, it's probably going to be a pass. But yeah, it's tough because like so many nice figures come out lately and it's just like, how do you decide, right? How do you really determine what needs to get added to your collection and what you can very easily skip? I like this next question. Here we have Reluin asking, What is your favorite Game Boy Advance game? I saw Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, which is one of my all-time favorite games ever. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to actually talk about my Game Boy Advance games. Let me go grab my favorites real quick. Alright, we're back with this big old stack of games. I pretty much just took everything from the front row that I really cared about brought it here they look real nice next to each other but we're only going to talk about our top five or i guess uh i'll do top six just because mother three is here as well can't forget about this one one of my favorites of all time but of course aria of sorrow like you said one of the best games on the console might even be the best castlevania game i might say rondo of blood or castlevania symphony of the night is better but i've replayed this one so much that it's really hard for me to decide Next up, we got Astro Boy Omega Factor. I was lucky enough to grow up with this game. One of the coolest, like, action games on the platform. Made by Treasure, so you know you're in for a good time. Pretty complicated if you want to get the good ending. The game is really short if you don't, so you better do it so you can enjoy the game to its fullest. And if we're talking about anime games, I think Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure does deserve a shout-out. It's between these two for the best, like, anime game on the console, in my opinion. You gotta check this one out, though I would not recommend, like, buying it, because it's like $100 now. Even just for the cart. Really not worth it. Next up, we have Metroid Fusion. Definitely in my top five. Zero Mission is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but the atmosphere, the vibes, like, the horror aspects of this one... And just like the difficulty too, I feel like this really comes together to make something special. And even now, it's still a very unique Metroid game, and I absolutely adore it. I was thinking about putting Warrior Land 4 in my top 5. This is a masterpiece as far as platformers go, but since I didn't grow up with it, I have a little bit more of an appreciation for WarioWare Twisted. This is my favorite WarioWare game. I have played hundreds of hours of this one. I actually lost my original cartridge in high school because I was just dumb and I just kept bringing it to school. I don't even know what I was thinking. Why would I, like, bring a game that you have to play like this to school? So, I don't know. I had to rebuy it. Got this really nice box for it now, though. And then, the final game, my top one game on the Game Boy Advance, and in my top ten of all time, is Mega Man Zero Three. Now, I can't convince you that this is better than Mega Man X, because these two are, like, really close together. But I think what makes this one kind of, like, elevated a little bit over X is just like the way it's drawn i love the art style of this game the music is fantastic though because it's on the game boy advance i can't say it's as good as x but still love it regardless the combat is extremely engaging it's very difficult but there's so much to learn so much to master and you really feel it and you really feel like you earned it but i think if you want to play this one nowadays you should probably just play the collection that's on the Switch or the PS4 because I do think the assist mode does take away a little bit of the headache of trying to get the S ranks, which lets you unlock special moves. I feel like that's the one thing about this game that they probably shouldn't have done, but either way, one of the best games of all time for me. 
I guess I'm just gonna leave these here for now, at least until I need the space, but next up is Lady1011 with the question of, what's the strangest figure that you own? I don't really feel like I have a lot of strange figures. I don't really look for strange figures, but I guess the Gons Boy from a couple of weeks back is certainly a strange one. But if I can give a shout out to one specific figure, it would be this guy right here, the Invisible Boy from Moon, another one of my favorite games of all time. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have no idea what this is, but just to explain the game very briefly, essentially you're a kid who is obsessed with Dragon Quest. You love the game so much, you power grind, you are so strong that nothing can stand in your way. And one day you get like sucked into the TV, of course you do, right? But when you get there, Things aren't how you thought they would be, because the character that you were playing as is a huge asshole. He just steals from people, he kills all of these monsters which are technically just innocent, they've done nothing wrong. So as the Invisible Kid, you're pretty much trying to like right the wrongs of your past self. And it's really interesting because there's also like this secondary plot about how like everybody kind of knows you, but you've never seen them before. It's really interesting how there's like a layer of lore that you can uncover if you want to. It's a very memorable game to me, and this figure not only reminds me of like how much I like that game, but I think they pulled it off like so perfectly too. Like all this is, is the idle animation from the game when you're sitting down and you're like kicking your feet in the grass, but from the outsider it just looks like some shoes and some gloves, a shirt and a hat, but it makes sense to me, right? It just, I believe this, this looks like the kid, it's really well painted, the grass is a nice touch as well, and it was only like a hundred bucks at the time. Probably very rare now, I can't imagine this one is easy to find, but if you play that game and you like it, you are definitely going to want this. Alright, next up we got a question from Ludi. What is your most liked and disliked type slash article of clothing on figures? I don't get a chance to really represent this enough in my collection, but scarves and cloaks. If you put either of those two on a character, I'm automatically going to like it more. And when the scarves aren't cool, they're gonna be cute instead, so it's a win-win either way. As for like articles of clothing that I don't like, I couldn't really think of a good example, so I'm just gonna say I'm not really like super into like gothic Lolita figures, I guess. I just, I don't know, it doesn't really do anything for me. Even though I do have one figure, I think her name is Hacker, that is like exactly that. Nice figure, I like it a lot, but I wouldn't keep collecting stuff like that. It doesn't really gel with me too much. Stephanie Ramirez 6880 asks, wondering what is the figure your girlfriend hates and the one she loves? Now, I'm assuming they're in my collection that you're talking about, and I have two. One, she absolutely hates Chachamaru. I don't understand that. That figure is so good. Alter, absolutely cooked. The body sculpt is like peak. It is so perfect. I don't know, maybe she has bad taste, but the other one, which I guess is a little bit more understandable, is the Grim Aloe cheerleader figure. I don't think she likes the cheerleader outfit at all. I think it's a bit too fetishy, maybe. I'm not really sure, but not a big fan of that one either. As for the figure that she loves, it's one that I never really got a chance to talk about on this channel, just because it's kind of old at this point, and it never really got brought up. But that is Alter's Menma from Anohana. In my opinion, this figure just completely outclasses every other Menma figure. It just perfectly represents not only the character, but the show itself. I love the fact that she comes with the secret base, there's a lot of like fun little accessories with it, and Menma just looks adorable here. Mm, I do not know how to pronounce this. Coffee Coffeeciamang3178, how did you get into the hobby? Did you start with scales or prize figures? This is a big question. This one's gonna take a little bit to answer, and I'm sure you're wondering why, but get cozy, because it's story time. Now, the story takes place over a couple of years, but we're gonna start in 2008. This was like my anime discovery phase. I got done watching Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece, and as everybody typically does, they wanna watch more. So I'm pretty much just like watching every single thing I could find on the internet, things that are recommended, the shows that are apparently good, and in like 2010, I land on Toradora. Now, romance anime is nothing new to me. I've watched a couple at this point, or at least around this time, I've seen stuff like Cross Game, Honey and Clover, Kimi ni Todoke, right? That's a cute one. But anyway, I watched Toradora. Obviously, since I have like 15 figures of Taiga, I like the show a lot, and it leaves an impact on me. But at this point, I don't actually know that figures are around. I just like the show a lot, and it kind of stays on my mind for a little bit as I'm doing other things. Now, something I've talked about very briefly before 
is that I used to make like Smash content. And during this time in 2010, I was actually playing Super Smash Bros. Brawl competitively. This game is very important to me. It pretty much just like changed who I am. It helped me meet like all of my close friends. And it kind of helped me just like develop as a person, as strange as that may be. It was really like an important time in my life. But this part of the story is actually not about Smash at all. It's the end of Smash for me where another game was coming out. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and I swear this is still part of the same story. Now, all of my friends were really interested in Marvel vs. Capcom, right? I never got a chance to play it, one or two, because I just didn't grow up with those games, never went to arcades, and the only other fighting game, like a traditional fighter that I played, was Street Fighter 4. Marvel vs. Capcom just seemed like the coolest shit, and I was really getting excited about playing this game. And when it came out, I played it non-stop, right? If I wasn't watching anime, if I wasn't going to school, I was playing this game. And it turned out that I was actually kind of decent at it. Now, you know, granted, you compare my skill level back then to anybody these days who still play the game, I'm trash. But when everybody didn't know how to play the game, I was good enough to make some money at locals, right? And eventually my friend hit me up and he's like, hey, we should go to EVO. Now, if you don't know what EVO is, EVO is the biggest fighting game tournament of the year. Think like the Super Bowl of fighting games. Every fighting game player knows it. Every fighting game player should go to this tournament. It's located in Vegas, and it's a great time. I've never been there before, and I was really excited to go. Unfortunately, this was literally when I found out that anime figures were a thing. So during the summer of 2011, I just stumbled into Toradora figures, right? And I saw one of Taiga, and I really wanted it. Now granted, this was on Amazon.com, and it was overpriced as shit. It was like 150 to like $175, but I didn't know any better. Ignorance is bliss. This just looked like something I wanted. And you know, it's not like I really had a job back then. I can make a little bit of money with some tournaments, but not enough. And I was planning a huge trip to go to Las Vegas to play a fighting game, and I likely wasn't gonna win any money considering how big it was, but I had a goal, right? I want this figure, but I wanna go to EVO. So I'm gonna go, and I'm going to not spend a dime more than I need to to survive for a week. So I'm gonna eat cheap, I'm not gonna buy any souvenirs, and like the transportation is also gonna be trash. Let me tell you, I took a Greyhound to Las Vegas. I live in Jersey, by the way, and if you don't know what a Greyhound is, it's a bus. You take a bus, and it goes long distances. Stupidest thing I've ever done. Three days on the road, no shower, poor eating, poor sleeping, can't really get any sleep, honestly. If I didn't have my PSP with Star Ocean 2 on it, I might have gone crazy, but then again, I was in good company. A couple of our friends went, and it was fun when I think back to it. I'm glad I did it, but holy shit, don't do that. It didn't even save that much money. But yeah, man, I was frugal as hell. I was so cheap during this time. I was trying just so hard to save any money I could, pinch every possible penny. Now, thankfully, I was underage, so I couldn't gamble, I couldn't drink. Honestly, I don't drink now anyway, but if I wanted to, I, I couldn't be tempted by it regardless. And, you know, food's a little expensive there, but it's manageable. The first time I ever had chicken and waffles was in Vegas, and that kind of changed my life, so I must have wanted something decent at that time but uh yeah no souvenirs bought was there for about a week i fought in the tournament i did pretty good i got i think 33rd but unfortunately just missed like the main stage where like anything was recorded so you'll never know if i'm telling the truth unfortunately but i have no reason to lie about this i lost to a player called gc yoshi who i believe is still around uh he was a cool guy just outplayed me it's not like i was amazing at the game or anything a week goes by, have a blast, try and like not spend any money, eventually take that bus home. It's a long three days back. I get home, I place my order, I buy the figure. It took a couple of days to get here. I was very anxious waiting just because I spent so much money on something that I really didn't know anything about, but they deliver the package, I unbox the figure, and I think needless to say, kind of game changing, right? Now, I don't think I said which figure specifically I bought, which one was my first but I took it out of the DTOF, and it's this one right here. It's the Q's Q Taiga Tiger outfit. Uh, it's kind of confusing. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a pretty nice one. Now, I had another question, or somebody asked me another question about, like, my first figure. 
from Emily. What figure got you into collecting and have your opinions on said figure changed? Would you get it or wouldn't you get it now? Um, I would absolutely get this figure, but I am biased, right? Because I just like the character so much. But even then, I would still say that this figure is in like the upper half of Taiga figures. It's not a perfect figure by any means. It certainly does show its age, but compared to the other figures that QSQ were making of her, it's way better. Like, it's surprising how the quality control only went down after this. Like, in comparison... This one's perfectly acceptable, and it's a very cute figure. It's got a unique vibe to it because of the outfit that she's wearing. So yeah, that's how I got my very first figure, and pretty much how I started collecting figures, because after this, I had to get more Taiga figures, had to get some Toho figures, Gintama figures, stuff like that. Pretty much got out of control, but I guess, in a way, all of that led me here. Which is kind of interesting when you think about it. Alright, I think we should move on. This video is going to be way too long. Next up, we got a question from Kelly Ann Marie. What is a figure you regret buying for any reason? I don't really regret buying any figure. If I don't like it that much, I just sell it and then I don't think about it that much. But to give you a better response, I'll tell you two figures that I regret selling for different reasons, all right? So first up, we have Akane from Ranma. She got a figure arts, and during that time, like every character from Ranma was getting a figure arts, which is kind of cool. I wish they would get scales instead but you take what you can get, right? And I was buying them, but at one point I was like, I don't really wanna buy all these. I'm kinda just like buying them for the sake of collecting, not for like the appreciation of the characters. So when I got Akane, pretty much sold her like right away for like 50 bucks, and nowadays she goes for like 300, so I feel like a jackass. Should have kept that one. It's not the end of the world or anything, but I probably should have thought about that one a little bit harder, and maybe I would have appreciated the figure more and just kept it, right? The other figure is Tharja from Fire Emblem. I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of this one. I had it immediately when it came out. I just pre-ordered it because I thought she was hot, but I never played that game. In fact, I've never played most Fire Emblem games, just like seven and three houses. Not a super fan or anything, but I like what I played, but I never got around to that one. So when I got the figure, I liked it, but when I kind of wanted some more money to buy things I would appreciate more, I just sold that one like right away for like whatever I paid for it and now it's like twice the price or triple the price or something and I kind of want it back and I feel stupid buying a figure that I sold for like three times more so I don't know if I'm ever going to do that but you got to really think about what you're getting rid of before you get rid of it even though I do recommend that you kind of like cleanse yourself of figures you don't really care about but sometimes we make mistakes right and these two were some of my bigger mistakes. Also, what is a figure you regret not picking up? I think some other people might have asked this question as well, so I'll give you one right now. And that is Alter's Gwendolyn from Odin Sphere. Now, I do have a figure of Gwendolyn. It's the really old one that Alter made. And it's not bad, but it is broken. That figure was broken the day I freaking got it. Really upset me at the time. But this new one absolutely beautiful i love this figure's look but it's so expensive now it's like 350 dollars or something and it's a big box too so good luck importing it apparently though it's also prone to breaking just because they used plastic pegs so maybe i dodged a bullet on that one but i always wished i jumped on that one back in the day and if it broke i would have dealt with it but i still think that's like one of her best figures and i really really like it and I don't think I'm going to buy it just because of the risk factor and the inflated price. Hey, how you doing folks? It's Suko from the future. And I'm here to just say that the recording for this Q&A went on for way longer than expected. So we're going to be splitting this video into two parts. Part one is now over and part two will be out in the near future, most likely next week. But just in case something goes wrong within the next month for sure. But either way, appreciate you guys. Thanks for checking out this video. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.